Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Earlier this year, my Nintendo 3DS XL had some kind of issue and it wouldn't work properly anymore. So I decided it was time to upgrade to the new Nintendo 3DS XL. And ever since I upgraded, I've been meaning to get rid of the old one, but I kept procrastinating. But today, I'm finally going to get rid of it. But I also just upgraded my iPhone, so I gotta get rid of my old one first. Procrastination is the episode where Spongebob tries to write an essay for boating school, but keeps putting it off. This episode aired on October 19, 2001, and is one of the few boating school episodes that isn't focused on Spongebob actually getting his driver's license. The first time we got to see something like this was episode 14, Hall Monitor from season 1, which was about Spongebob being Hall Monitor. Despite that, this episode is notorious for the fact that Spongebob's house talks for the first time. Beyond that, something else that this episode is remembered for is the fact that roughly one whole minute of the episode was deleted from TV reruns. This episode aired on TV in 2001, but starting in May of 2005, this is how the episode aired in reruns. This is harder than I thought. I can feel those juices pumping now. Anybody who watched this episode on TV before May of 2005 would remember seeing those scenes and were most likely f***ing befuddled as to why the scene was cut. I only say likely because I wasn't an active follower of the series at that point that I am today. I do remember watching the scene on DVD and remembered how much sure the episode felt without that scene. As I just stated, the version with the deleted scene is still intact on home media releases, most notably the Season 2 DVD. And because of that, we'll be talking about the episode with the deleted scenes since we have it right here. I'll go more in depth on why those scenes were removed later. For now, let's watch this episode because it's actually relatable to people that are either in school or went to school. So the episode starts up and Mrs. Puff is assigning her class to write an 800 word essay on what not to do at a stoplight. Everybody is upset except Spongebob. Mrs. Puff says the essay is due tomorrow and tells her class to not goof off. Later that day, Spongebob is getting ready to write his essay on paper with a pencil. That'll just make it harder to keep track of the 800 words. Spongebob wrote out the title, but as he started to write the essay itself, a couple hours went by and he still hadn't come up with anything to write. Spongebob looked out the window and saw everybody having fun outside, even Sandy without her spacesuit on. Spongebob wasn't happy to continue writing the essay on such a nice day, but if he finished his essay, he'd be a step closer to getting his license, followed by a drag race car crash. Ah, so an essay is why I didn't pass my driver's test on the first try. Spongebob tried to write again, but his head fell on the desk and tried doing some calisthenics to help him think a bit better. After that, he started playing around with the scooting sounds his chair was making, but he still couldn't think of anything to write. Then Gary came up and Spongebob offered to get Gary something to eat, but Gary didn't want anything since Spongebob had his essay to write. Spongebob still fixed Gary up a tower's worth of snail food, to which Gary ate in one bite. Then Spongebob noticed that Gary made a bit of a mess next to his bowl, so he decided to clean it up. This led to him cleaning the rest of the floor as well as everything else in the kitchen, and he didn't stop until his kitchen was as chrome as the future. Not the future. When he was done, it was 10pm. He finally started to write and seemingly made some progress until he stopped and saw he only wrote one word with a fancy T. Spongebob stopped writing to try to think more, but saw the phone and called Patrick. Patrick was asleep when Spongebob called him, but as soon as he started talking to him, Patrick reminded Spongebob about his essay to Spongebob's denial. Then Patrick hung up and Spongebob went back to work. Spongebob found eraser shavings on his paper. I've never seen him use an eraser up to this point. He choked on an eraser shaving and drank water to save his life. Then he decided to make a sandwich to give him brain food. Then the mailman arrived with a package, and Spongebob started chatting his ear off. Then the mailman reminded Spongebob about his paper, much to Spongebob's shock. He went back inside, and his goofing off was all over the news, prompting him to karate chop the TV. 
Then we get some nightmare fuel with a talking chair, Swindog chasing after his desk, weird colors and sizes, Swindog losing his pants and chasing after them, getting locked out of his house, the clock starting to talk, the candle coming to life and burning his essay, and then the candle caused the inside of his house to catch fire. Spongebob just ran around his house in circles in fear in his underwear until his house started talking, which revealed it was all a dream to which Spongebob woke up from. Spongebob looked at his paper and saw he had only written the word THE on it. He looked at the clock and saw that class started in less than 5 minutes and didn't know what to write. He's also not going to make it to school in less than 5 minutes. But then he remembered his dream and used everything that occurred in the dream to help him write the essay. Later that day, he ran to school, only to find the class empty. Mrs. Puff came in and explained that she tried to call him to say that she was going to a teacher's convention and that she canceled the assignment in favor of taking a field trip to a stoplight. She then left and Swanda ripped the paper and himself in half and the episode ends. Well, I get stopped at a stoplight every day. Does that mean I go on a field trip every day? So that was procrastination, and I definitely have things to say about it. I'm going to talk about the deleted scenes first though. Whenever this episode airs on TV and reruns after those scenes were cut, the picture quality always looks so washed out and desaturated. I don't know if that was a result of the scenes being removed, or if it was just a coincidence, but it is quite noticeable. But hey, at least if you didn't know what episode was airing, it's hard to not know that procrastination is airing. As for the scene itself, it's extremely jarring when it cuts from Spongebob looking sad to when he gets a bit more confidence back and starts moving on his chair. I don't know why Nickelodeon didn't think twice before they removed a whole minute or so from the episode. It also makes the commercial break between this episode and episode 74, I'm With Stupid, even longer than three and a half minutes. Even if those parts don't add a whole lot to the story, it still helps the episode flow better. It's so easy to tell that the scene was cut, and nobody likes seeing it that way. And that part of the episode is the only time where we see Squidward as he appears Where's Waldo style in this shot, and it's the only time we see Sandy in this episode too. Two of the main characters are cut here, and that's only the beginning of how disappointed I am about the scene being removed. The outdoor visuals are so cool, especially Gary and the jellyfish. The goofiness of the nose and eyebrows doing the calisthenics is disappointing to see gone too, and of course, the drag race cart crash. Which is our segue into why the scene was removed in the first place. Now the crash was removed because it was a live action scene, so therefore it's much more violent than if it was just a cartoon. So I can understand why that part was cut. The outdoor scenes were removed because when Patrick was rubbing suntan lotion on Sandy, it could be seen as Patrick trying to remove Sandy's bikini top. And as for the calisthenics, the motion of Spongebob's nose could be seen as obscene. Some of these scenes I could understand, but as for others, you don't need to remove a whole minute or so of the episode just to make it seem less inappropriate. Hell, episode 85 just one bite from season 3 removed a scene, but it was done in a way that actually worked, and I wouldn't have guessed that a scene was removed if I hadn't seen that episode before. But we'll get to that eventually. This, of course, is just one of Nickelodeon's many awful decisions to come. I could come up with some ways to remove some scenes to make this episode work better and feel less jarring if the scenes had to be removed. For the shot with Patrick and Sandy, you can clearly see the suntan lotion here, even if it's a blink and you'll miss it clip. However, you can see the whole outdoor scene and just chop out the shot of Patrick and Sandy. As for the car crash, I do understand how this is violent and I understand why that was removed. However, this could have been fixed by either using stock footage from a previous Boating School episode that shows one of Spongebob's numerous failed attempts to take his test. That would have been some nice continuity. Or maybe make an entirely new crash scene which would have just been Spongebob crashing his boat in some way. Either of those solutions would have been fine with me. And if they were absolutely petrified of Spongebob's nose motion in this shot, they could have just showed Spongebob doing calisthenics and then his eyelashes doing the calisthenics. Boom, there you go. You still have the episode at face value, but with a couple shots edited and fixed to meet Nickelodeon's concerns, and it would have been significantly less jarring than the edit that was made. That would have been perfectly acceptable, but Nickelodeon just has to be Nickelodeon and have to make bad decisions that make everybody upset. <coughs> 
And now that I've proven that I can make some decisions better than Nickelodeon again, let's talk about everything that wasn't affected by the changes. I do like the nightmare fuel scene. If you haven't seen this episode yet, don't watch it for the first time in a dark room. I remember a time when I would stop watching the episode around this shot of Spongebob's giant desk. And then I would turn the TV off and back on a bit later hoping the scene would be over. And most of the time, it was. Sometimes I turn it on right at the end, and sometimes right when he's writing the essay. Eventually, I manned up as always and watched it from beginning to end as I now do with all the other episodes. I really like how the older episodes weren't afraid to show some nightmare stuff to its younger audience, something most shows are too chicken to do these days. I will also admit, I didn't expect the twist of this being a dream, and I do love how it was pulled off. For a little while, I was trying to figure out where the dream would have started, and I think it would have been when Spongebob puts his head down and then gets up to do calisthenics. Sure, Spongebob wrote THE in his dream, but we can chalk that up to he wrote it off screen before he looked outside. And again, another reason why the story doesn't flow as well with a whole minute or so cut from the episode. They really need to think before they act. I like the beginning where Spongebob was annoying Nat with his excitement and how Nat tried to retaliate to no avail. I like the gags where Gary eats all his food in one bite and when Spongebob karate chops the TV. I like the detail of the Gary clock from episode 66, Gary takes a bath, reappearing here, and how Spongebob's kitchen looks chrome like the future from episode 28, SB129 from season 1. Future. I like the conversation with Patrick over the phone and Spongebob's bread line to the mailman. Rye or pumpernickel? Oh, brother. This episode is definitely simple, but the procrastination part is done pretty well and goes to show how anybody will do anything else when they can't focus on something they struggle with. So Spongebob trying to do his work and everybody around him reminding him about his essay is pretty relatable because everybody does that. And I'm pretty sure everybody has nightmares when they procrastinate too. I also like Mrs. Puff in this episode. It's definitely questionable that she only gives one night to write an 800 word essay on something so mundane, but I love that she's so positive and happy here. She doesn't get so pissed off with Spongebob just smiling in this episode. And it's a shame the newer episodes don't do something like that with her. And I think that's about all I have to say. It's a good episode, and it did some good things. My biggest negative was definitely when they removed the scenes in question and made the episode much more jarring. But when watched as intended, it works so much better. It's definitely simple, but a simple episode works best with a concept like this in my opinion. It would be nice if Nickelodeon re-edited the episode with the suggestions I made, but beggars can't be choosers, and a bad company is a bad company. Procrastination is a good episode. It works much better in its full 11 minute form, and as jarring as all of those changes are, it still pulled off some things well, like the nightmare fuel scene and the relatability of how we always put off things that we just don't want to do. And speaking of things that I just don't want to do, I think it's time I finally get rid of my old 3DS XL system. Right after I get rid of my old phone case, and after I get back from my friend's wedding. 